Okay, I'm going to break these up so that you don't have to all sit through them at once, because it'll probably be over 15 minutes anyways. Um, let's go through this here. This is 1-1, one, one, um, and here's the main ideas. Introducing urban patterns, central business district, and competition for space. So we want to look at the urban patterns that exist. You might remember central business district. We're going to look at this again. And then this one, which is big competition for space and a central business district. So different ways to define an urban area. You have a central city. Think of downtown LA. Um, municipal city limits. So in other words, there are limits to a city. And uh, here, that's hard to understand here in LA where every city is connected, but one city stops and another city begins. A good example for us here in Pomona is that we're right next to Montclair and we may enter Montclair and not even realize it, but it's still right there. It's like they're right by each other. One city starts, one city stops. Or if we go up, we'll go into Laverne or we'll go into Claremont. Um, urbanized area, a central city and surrounding suburbs of 50 plus thousand. So we are way beyond this where we're at. Um, we have many, many, many people. Um, but Pomona is definitely an urbanized area. Uh, we're, I think, at 162,000. A urban cluster is between 2,500 and 50,000 residents. Um, so I guess that would classify Claremont as an urban cluster because it's got like 40,000. So metro Metropolitan Statistical Area, MSA. Urbanized area with 50 plus thousand population. Um, county of that urbanized area. Adjacent counties with high density and interaction with a central county. So there's downtown LA, there's the city of Los Angeles, but there's also metropolitan Los Angeles. So if you look up those online right now, you'll see there's a big difference in population and everything because these are connected interaction between them. Micropolitan statistical area. It's like an MSA, but central city has 10,000 to 50,000. And then all over, we have a combination of these. So everything is connected. It'll be micro and metropolitan all connected. All right. So this here, oh man, <laughs> this here, there we go is the U.S. Census defines an urban areas depending on the size and number of municipalities. So this would be our municipality, um, our urbanized area, our urban cluster, and then our metropolitan and micropolitan. Those would be the two there. Here's a look at St. Louis. So here in the middle, we have the city of St. Louis. Bloop. And then we have the urbanized area around it. We have urban clusters. So these other areas where there'll probably be facilities and everything else. Um, then we have the metropolitan. And then down here, the micropolitan connected to it. So. CBD, Central Business District, or downtown, is most central place in a city with a high concentration of public services, so hospitals, schools, all that, business services, banks and whatnot, consumer services, stores, high threshold, and range retail. So in other words, it's going to take a lot of people to fill these up. They have a high threshold, but people will go a long way to them. So they have both high threshold and high range. And they have retail serving, so the stores that serve that downtown area. Let's look at Louisville. That's how it's pronounced, Louisville, Louisville. Um, Louisville, or Louisville CBD, contains a high concentration of public, business, and consumer services. Tall buildings demonstrate the value of locating near the city. So when you look at these here, you can see public services. What do we have? We have court, we have metro, we have um, the gardens, 
we have the this is the corporate headquarter which is oh a yum center that must be like a um public gathering or like sports event place and then kentucky convention center so the, that's where the public goes together our business services these are mainly things that the public doesn't go to probably just workers because they're businesses and in consumer these are usually open to the public so we have the marriott theater um, a show venue and then probably another place that's a hotel with also a public gathering or for like a convention so the consumer business district features office buildings for business services as well as consumer services with high thresholds high ranges so people will go a long way to these services but it takes a lot of people to fill them up so for example borders Borders is not something that is in every neighborhood. People will drive to a Borders. If you don't remember what Borders is, it was a bookstore, which I think is now closed down. Um, so think Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble. People would drive a long way to Barnes and Noble, but it takes a lot of people going there to keep it open. Okay, competition for space. Space is limited. So this leads to vertical development to maximize space. In other words, we're talking skyscrapers. Um, also, there's underground spaces like parking garages, subways. So these two things go together. There's an underground city and an above ground city, and they both are quite expansive. Some activities include manufacturing, residences, but these are changing. Manufacturing tends to be moving away as residents also tend to move away because the Living in, expensive, living in the city is expensive. Here's a good example of underground, an underground city. Montreal is freezing. Canada is freezing. It's a wonderful place, but it's freezing, which is why I stay here. But what this does is it leads to development of an underground cities. So there's underground malls. There's underground, like, restaurants, stores whatever people need is underground and that's where people stay so montreal canada's underground city maximizes the use of land in the city center and allows shoppers to avoid this terrible weather okay john hancock hancock center in chicago this is the sears tower um used to be like the most advanced building in the world and now doesn't look so advanced anymore huh the John Hancock Center and the neighboring buildings have commercial services on the lowest floors, offices in the middle, and apartments and activities on the topmost floor. Uh, so for me, that is terrifying. I would never live that high.